I like this because it's not just licks, it's kind of seeing a cohesive solo. You have to often go straight to a great solo and see how it's constructed. Because a lot of times it's like these subtle things with phrasing, timing, rhythm, that's the hard part. It's not just playing a bunch of fast licks. It's about, whoa, I can't get that timing just right. And it's actually just a few notes. That's usually the harder part I always mention. So really focus on that. That's what's gonna make your solo And as you out. already have probably noticed, I'm choosing um, specific solos that I think are really nice and attainable. Of course, it'll take practice, but they're also just one chorus long. His early solos seem to have been just one chorus before he kind of just stretched out. He actually starts off like he's playing the melody. I love this. I love that old school where there's, the melody is important still. It's not like, hey, I could do all these you know fancy licks and stuff. So he starts off with this. And there's a little bit of the articulation too, I think is important. So how I, how I wrote it, how I wrote it doesn't tell you what fingering to use. Fingering is very subjective, but how, you know, obviously, because Django did leads with two fingers. Um, Check out this arpeggio. What arpeggio is that? B flat, G, D, B flat, G then a little scale. Because also in the last solo, Django, and this is kind of the whole point of this workshop, is to dissect and to figure out what is Django thinking. On oftentimes, on a dominant chord or even on a major chord, he liked to play these minor arpeggios, minor triad. How does that work? Well, we're on a B flat seven chord. Mm -hmm. And he's thinking B flat, the relative minor of B flat major is G minor. Why does that work? Well, the G is actually the sixth degree. So that's just the whole beauty of the relative major to the relative minor. Hey guys, welcome to today's song. It's My Melancholy Baby, a la Django Reinhardt. Let's get started. But I want to talk about the melody. I have some tabs of where some possible fingerings are, and I want to just play through the basic melody. As I always say, whenever anybody interprets a melody, rarely do you hear it just straight note for note. There's always some embellishment. I mean, uh, jazz vocalists as well. Frank Sinatra recorded this. A lot of people re uh, record this as far as vocals go, have recorded it too, Ella Fitzgerald. Um, so a lot of people will sing it, but Django's version is, is the versions, all of his versions are usually kind of a medium balance. <laughs> talk about the chords and the melody and then we'll of course learn his solo note for note and show you the fingering ideas and the rhythmic ideas and some possible techniques. That was the version. What I want to do is to take a look at the lead sheet and the melody and let's just play through the basic uh, tune uh, first. How about that? I have it loaded. Let's do the first eight bars and let's do it slower. I notice it's just right on the beat. Four. I like that little slide. Two, three, four. 
second ending. Two, three, four. right you guys see all the sharps in there those are we're basically in the key of C but it does have these nice little bluesy little crump and then very sweet pretty notes in nine two chromatic to the to the two that was a B flat seven to the a7 kind of darker to the D minor that's a five of the two and then this is so it starts on the two, then it goes one. Okay, the, those embellishments, you know, we're gonna use those and see those in the improv as well. The two, five, to the two, to the five. And then the five to the five, to the five, just to show you what's going on. And then the C slash E is the three chord essentially, or it's a one chord with a three in the bass. And then D minor seven and G nine. That's my go-to shape. That was still on that first. And C is here. If you wanna just, if you don't, if this is new for you, start with the C, G, and C. This is the four note voicing and then get the E in the bass. very melodic just a substitute for C <laughs> you know you'd be fine just playing C if you wanted to it's just we're being pretty bass specific C slash E E flat dim and then that's a sub just for D7 by the way like the, the two of the two of the D minor is A7. So oftentimes you'll hear um, people do this. You know, you, you can add a lot of bass movement. That's kind of what Django does on his recording. Put bass movement on the on a D minor chord. You can always kind of uh, fill in, I'll just say, with bass movement. But I'm just showing you pretty much the bare bones right now. So that was the first half again. Let's just do that again, 75%. I like that little intro. Get ready, here we go. D minor. I'm choosing uh, specific solos that I think are really nice and attainable. Of course, it'll take practice, but they're also just one chorus long. His early solos seem to have been just one chorus before he kind of just stretched out pretty far. He threw what's happening here. He actually starts off like he's playing the melody. I love this. I love that old school where there's the melody is important still. It's not like, hey, I could do all these, you know, fancy licks and stuff. So he starts off with this. And there's a little bit of the articulation too, I think is important. So how I, how I wrote it, how I wrote it doesn't tell you what fingering to use. Fingering is very subjective, but how, you know, obviously, cause Django did leads with two fingers, um, but I'm doing all four fingers. So if you just wanna watch this phrase, how I'm doing it. And then check this out right there. I did three fingers, then I'm gonna shift. And then I'm gonna go. 
So the, the timing's important. It's a little bit tricky, that's why I'm gonna walk through this. And please, of course, try it out with me. We have these first three notes, kind of like the chromatic, like the melody. But I'm not gonna use my pinky for that last note, the G here. Four. And then add the and, the syncopation there, the offbeat on the C. So it's one, two, three, four, and, and, three, four. And let it ring, I want to make it short. One, two, three, four. And then now we want to get the slur. That's that slur there, and it's a pull off. So we want to pull off the 10th. This is my 10th fret, by the way, on these <laughs> Gypsy Jazz guitars. That's a 10th fret. Pull off to the eight. That means you gotta have the eight already pressed down, okay? You can't have your finger up. You have to go 10, eight, and then get to the seven. And I didn't, I didn't notate the slide, but you can see my finger moving here. So just get the movement. These are the subtle little details that sound really sweet. The articulations. So it's uh, mm, and then go right back to the C, and that's right on the beat. So it's, actually let's just do that part right there on the and the two. So it's one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And if you want to watch my right hand, notice I kind of move closer to the bridge. One, two, one, two. One, two. Okay, so listen, or do it with me, the first two bars. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's do that again. Imagine the C chord. Ready? One, two, three, four. Okay, so we have this G minor. It helps to know what you're doing. I, instead of just like going six, eight, seven, eight, you know, just reading numbers, it really helps to analyze and say, oh, G minor triad. You don't have to think about it except for the rhythm. Or maybe you can bend that note. You want to get a little bit more exotic, but Django loved to bend. But what I'm definitely saying is understand this. Make some notes to yourself, uh, mental notes or written notes. Uh, B flat seven, A seven, and on the D minor. One, two, three, four. Okay, from the top, let's get that much. Very, very slow. Even slower than that. One, two, three, four. 